Kissy. Hey. supposed to start then. Hmm. <laughs> it's pretty windy out here. <laughs> As we see. <sighs> I just showed you the meat cap of my new all cotton um really comfy uh day wear line pajama line i'm all about eco consciousness um, fabrics that allow your bodies to breathe because polyester is 99 percent gasoline and seeing that your skin is 99 percent of what you assimilate within on various forms, it's what you want next to your body all day, something of pureness so it can breathe and it can connect to self and environment and nature. And these synthetic fabrics that we have created are not only harsh for Mother Nature, but harsh for us. Don't get me wrong, once in a while I like to wear a recycled piece or a piece I bought from back in the day when I maybe wasn't as conscious um, about the universe and myself and they're fun but on a day-to-day -day line I think it's very important to have comfort because when our bodies are all tight and constrained and wound up it's very difficult to relax and to live an energetic field of just being and breathing when you're tied here caught here sucked in here you know Okay. Today I'm going to, okay, <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna hold it like one of these. There you go. Today I'm gonna speak about, oh. well, I've been having some interesting downloads on a whole bunch of ways. I hardly ever think anymore, but when I do think, I get these interesting concepts and ideas. I'm very into, quantum energy and healing and frequency so i've been looking a lot and um understanding programmable dna how it connects to electricity and how nanoparticles in the body um, actually not only can be programmable but at the same time they can alter and decipher one's perspective of reality because we are electrical beings so as soon as you put electrical things into your body you're automatically programmable but at the same time there are ways that you can connect back to your god source and being and heal in and out mentally spiritually physically of getting things out like gra uh, graphene you know you can drink certain ashes from certain sites that uh, clean out the graphene, like zeolite. Uh, you wanna make sure the source is very pure. At the same time, meditation. Because what does meditation do? Well, when you go into relaxation, you go into this state of just being and bliss. And then therefore you become the master of self so you can program your energy through your thoughts feelings, frequencies, things you've let go so that your electricity in your body changes. Therefore, you can't be programmable. Also, it's done through food, as we know, genetically modified 
food, fake seeds, all of this, because what does Hippocrates say? Take thy food as medicine, otherwise you'll be taking medicine. Take thy food. And so considering the protocols of what most of our farming goes into, because I'm really into farming. I grew up on a farm when I was a child, a blueberry farm and cranberry farm. And my, my father was very connected to the earth and my grandmother uh, was a Tibetan herbalist. Like she knew all these secret concoctions and she also had some otherworldly skills where she could just do things by thought, sight, touch because of her DNA lineage. Um, she passed on a lot of these beautiful things to me. So when we go into a state of meditation, we can raise our frequency and let go of the lower vibrations like fear, control, manipulation, jealousy, all of those things, you know? You can just go into a state of just being. Where you're so present in the moment. You're so conscious and aware that you are actually living the dream because there is no wants, no desires. You're so at one with existence that you are living the dream. Not the other dream you put got put on by the society, the patterns, the program, the parents, if one believes in past lives or not. None of that. When you watch the mind, when you watch the thoughts just go by, and you don't judge them, and you don't cling to them, and you don't possess them, or hold them on, or run them like a cuckoo person, like Einstein says, what's the definition of insanity? Thinking or doing the same thing and expecting the same result. When you let go of that, you connect to this electric body, which is connected to that. Which then makes you one with existence. When you become authentically you, an individual, you run, aren't run by the masses or the sheep or the collective conscious because the consciousness of the collective is a bunch of beliefs that have been given on one. Where they assimilate these blind lives that are unknown. Dead. Walking dead as my father calls it. Easy programmable. This place is very, very old. You know, Nicholas Tesla got most of his great energy when he was meditating, he said, just like Einstein said, because uh, Tesla had Swami Vikananda leading him in that way. Not even leading him, walking the journey with him. Because a scientist like Tesla, who has a consciousness of purity and doing better for the existence, well, you'll be killed by the masses, but at the same time, they don't understand a genius. The common man cannot understand a genius. They will think he's insane. Whether he's speaking the truth like Jesus or Buddha, Socrates. Lincoln. I love Abraham Lincoln. God, there's something about him. Beautiful soul. See, this is the thing that's been held from us for so long. Because there's different races here. We all look the same. Even if we're the same race. But we're not all human. <laughs> for sure. Because the consciousness of a human is very high. Why do you think AI, the only thing AI can't do that you can't do, that I can't do. The only thing it has that it can't do, that we can't. 
is become conscious and enlightened. Because it has no awareness. It has no connection to spirituality. It's been programmable by man. It's an electric being getting electric thoughts programmed. The most deadliest of deadliest men are those that know the truth, who walk the path alone. Because many will be scared. Even those that think they run the system will be scared because the truth always prevails. You can kill one, but it'll take up somewhere else or somehow other way. Truth cannot be killed. The earth was birthed by an Indian. An Indian. Well, I don't mean necessarily an Indian. I mean, all the regions around India, Africa, all this, there was something that was birthed there. So if Jesus, they throw off all these insane signs and break their thoughts. And your feelings. And then the thing is to go back into your center. Like, I don't, like we were saying before, it's not about, I don't, sorry, let me take the contacts back about, not man is birthed in India. I mean this. There were some religion or the universe or existence of spirituality started somewhere you know your africa your india all these types of places but before that there was something where there was nothing you know black hole existence silence that's the true frequency but indian india herself is actually a feminine energy and nobody has been able to conquer India. Look at the British tried, you had the Mughals and all these things. India has never been able to be captured. And she's a feminine energy. Universe, God, existence is a feminine energy because in order to be birthed, one would have to have the vessel of feminine energy to birth because when does man birth except for idea? Physically, there's never been man to be birth, except for maybe these strange new whatever they do to you <laughs> to give you Lord knows what. Hey, cute guy, come here. Wow, well, you're tough. Hey, where are you going? Hey! So if you're programmable, someone could make you live out an exact way they put into a program. So you could do anything they want, say, think, feel. Also, you could also inject diseases, viruses, thoughts. And the only way to become free is to become authentically you. And it makes no sense how, you know, there's missing chapters of the Bible where Jesus went to India and meditated. 
And if, you know, Christianity is like a very new religion because like the one of the first ones that we know of, and I'm sure there was even before this, was like the Gita. Who knows what existed before this because this earth is so old. So then all of a sudden Jesus decided to pop himself out like just a little while ago and say, oh, this is the God of all gods. What is the God of all gods? And who is telling us all this? What's their agenda, their story? Stories get manipulated. It's like telephone. So what is true and what is not true? See, all religions are outdated. Every single one. You can have some key components like tell the truth and that and this. Even those things don't even work any day. They don't work. Because nobody knows thyself. So how can you act accordingly when you don't know thyself? If you're not in center with your body, your being, your mind, your spirit, you're not acti actually acting from your true instinct. Your gut instinct. That's why everyone's just following or walking dead. And a lot of people are transitioning right now to the other side. Some by choice, some not by choice. Things they've chosen to do, not chosen to do. But do you really want to keep coming back here? Because see, once you gain enlightenment or consciousness, not only are you a sovereign free being connected to all of the divine, but also you can stop taking birth after birth after birth. Unless you're enjoying this. I enjoy this place greatly, but I also feel like, um, I know this is one of my last births. I told my parents as a child, like remembering my past lives and my parents, and this was just something I was born into. It was really interesting. Um, I faced a very deep, dark night of the soul where someone had told me something about myself, which most people would be fretting and crying and fearful, which I did go through. Um, life and death. And I said to someone, um, okay, I got it. I looked at myself and I was like, I can heal this myself. Most people would be running to your outside sources in every form to save you but i knew mentally physically spiritually no one could save me but me see i can heal everything in me because i am the universe when i let go of past karmic traumas sicknesses of the mind habits i've created things that i need to surrender and usually what we think actually is our deepest, darkest, you know, um, experience is actually the biggest blessing. Because not only do you grow spiritually, mentally, and physically, but you start unlearning about yourself and the system and what you've been taught and you go deep 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 within and when you go deep within you connect to something in existence that is so beyond you don't even know what's real or what's the dream My father and me were talking about why they don't want enlightened female masters if you know universe was birthed from feminine energy and how would we have this system running unless man was dictating it and ruling it and how to assimilate the thoughts of the masses well print media and what's the oldest thing to do so stories so you just program the stories this place is so old. We've had enlightened beings of all kinds and all forms. There's been enlightened dogs, humans, nature trees. Everything has its own consciousness level of enlightenment. When I'm talking true, true enlightenment, I mean, it comes in all forms for whatever the frequency of being it is in. 
because everything exists in everything. were just some random thoughts. Meditate. Connect to existence. Connect to yourself. Spend as much time as you can alone. Dance, create art, spread love. Love yourself, the totality of your being without judgment. The mind body is one. When I healed my mind, I healed my body. When I healed my body, I healed my mind. There is nothing to be scared. Enjoy it. Hug a tree, plant a seed, hug your neighbor. Let go of angry thoughts, create art. Learn. But first and foremost, always listen to you. Nobody knows better or is their own master except for you. You want to try other people's ideas or whatever what sure but if it's coming from the other or fear let it go listen to you you'll know what's for you and what's not for you because the innate being always knows the gut instinct always knows that's why here in india we think of the gut as the first mind that's why also interestingly enough actually i was going to sign off but here's a little more so they pumped me full of antibiotics when i was a kid because i had horrible acne and it was a hormonal problem and family situations going on and energetics and you name it and probably some past life stuff too okay pump me with antibiotics it made my stomach so sick they didn't even know what they were prescribing me they're just prescribing me didn't even give me like you know gave me things that they weren't even supposed to give to me without severe tests and all this anyways long story short kill the gut kill the mind dead mind dead gut so the gut the microbes all the cells all the energies One must get to the root in order to heal. Just like mind disease. What's underneath the clouds? Heal what's underneath the clouds. And then if the clouds come later on and they just float by, you realize them for what they are, but at the same time, that isn't weighing on you. Because see, this is the thing. You can't change the world till you change yourself. Only when you change your inner world will this world be reflected back. 